The reason why I asked is I started a 5 a.m. Mester Scrum show, which I do every day. And it's kind of the same idea as like giving back. It's all free. There's nothing to charge. All my things, my practical. So the inside knowledge I share on that show, it's got a podcast and a um, um, YouTube video. So, and there's, I'm on all the social media and stuff like that. And a lot of things I share in this activity. And um, so I'm Greg Mester. I've been doing, some would call me a, uh, what do you want to say, a, uh, a full stack coach. I've been coaching different areas. And one of the things I discovered is uh, I had some companies I helped coach, enterprise level, corporate, that they really wanted to do OKRs. And the more I researched in OKRs, I said, oh my God, this is the nice fit with scale, with scrum. OKRs, if you do it right, and Scrum work really well together. And I came up, my thing is radical change. And then also minimizing the documentation, because I am a non-documented, um, Kieran and Jay will all know, I don't, I'm very small in documentation, don't like it. They, they train me well, because I was also a client many, many, many year, years ago of theirs. And um, so I took the heart the minimizing documentation part. And I, I always look at, at doing program project management for 30 years, plus all my agile experience, you know, I, how much documentation you really need and what value does that help the customer? So with that, let's get into it since we don't have a lot of time. Um, all right, we're good. So I got my little pirate here and got OKRs, right? Because I got pirates as R. Um, but there is a treasure associated with this. So it does have a point on this graphic. There is a point to the treasure. There is some gold. Um, so I'm going to do a little detour. Got the agenda. I'm going to talk about OKRs a little bit. Some history for those who don't know a lot about it. We're going to do some survey questions, some polling on here. I have some references, videos, books that you can watch after this. I think they're great little things. I actually use them in my training guides. When I train people, pre-work, whatever, getting ready for the OKR session and try to find things that are small enough. I try to create small ones too. In my 5 a.m. Master Scrum Show, there's shows on OKRs and, and different things like that. And with that, I'm going to the next, next page. So since we are in the job market, right, we're all out there, we're part of this group, I wanted to share something with you all about Agile and project management in general. And this is data from um, just this, the other day. I pulled it Friday, so this presentation is fresh off the press. And I wanted to share some thoughts on it. Scrum Master, how many jobs in the greater Philadelphia area? There's like 6,000 job postings here in Philly for that. And it's gone up since September by over 1,300 postings. Agile Product Owner, that's growing. That's got like 2,000. The Agile Project Manager, it's interesting. It's like, what is that? But they list it that way. It's like 1,700. And then Project Manager is like 11,000. That's just in this area, some Agile Coach stuff. And the same thing worldwide. If I looked at, and this is just like one month's data. So there's a lot of questions out there for Agile. And the very small one, which I didn't put on the chart because it would have just blown up the chart, is the term Agile. In Philadelphia alone, the greater Philadelphia, which is the metro area, 3 million people in the area or so, 35,000 jobs referenced Agile, right? So this is all good stuff. No matter what you do, dev, testing, scrum masters, Agile coach, accountants, anything that you do in the business world. And I looked over across the United States. There was 470,000 positions that referenced Agile in the terminology in LinkedIn. So this is all good stuff that you can take away. You may not do it today, but you may, may um, lead to more interest um, in what we do in sharing. And anybody, sh anybody shocked over this graph, this these numbers? Anybody surprised? One thing I would say, if you're ever looking for a job, also look at Agile Project Manager. It may not be Scrum Master, may not be. But it'll give you some more options that are out there that maybe these companies that are transforming from a waterfall traditional way, they don't have a title as Scrum Master or Agile Coach or project Product Owner in their HR. 
So they might call it an agile project manager. So be flexible on their perspectives that's out there. And you might miss out on a good opportunity. Great data there, um, Greg. Thanks. And every time I do this, I once a month, I started a thing where I'm posting this up and LinkedIn and stuff, just sharing with people. Just to give them – I want people to be positive on the job market and that they can find opportunities, right? And then if you get a great certification from Daily Agile, then you'd be in better shop. Right. <laughs> All right. We got a survey question. We got a cur we got two survey questions. First one is uh, current position or company. Do they use? And if, Jay, you can share the survey. That would be great. Um, should pop up. OK, so in your current position, does your company use? Um, OKRs uh, or what kind of what kind of framework do they use? Uh, do they do choice one, more project management, waterfall planning, agile frameworks, both? Looks like I got an eight of eight. Is everyone or nine of ten? A little bit when we think we get everyone who's on here. Yeah, once you get them all on, I'll end the poll and then we'll show the uh, total results for everybody. Okay. How many people we got on the um, in the in the conference there, Jay? Looks like we got twenty. Total twenty. Yeah. So a couple more people. We got sixteen votes in. You can count myself, so that doesn't count. Jay, did you put yours in there? Uh, no, I did. I didn't end mine in. That's oh, fine. Okay, so we might be pretty close. Yeah. That's pretty I good. For, so for timing purposes, I think we'll go ahead and end it at this okay, point. Okay, so end the end the end the poll. And we'll share the results. And sharing the results here. I'm gonna put on see my screen. But so it looks like wow, no one's using traditional project management. So they're all agile people, but it looks like we got a combination, a little bit of agile, traditional project management. Uh, a couple people are using the uh, agile frameworks alone. So that's a good basis to know what everyone's talking. So if I talk agile, it won't be totally off the planet. All right, Jay, you want to do a quick, quick survey number two? Yep. All right, number two. And why Jay's doing that, we can do comic relief. This is Bubbles. Bubbles is teaching the class. <laughs> Every time I do a show, she comes up, hops on my lap. Apparently, there is a social media TikTok channel that talks about cattails. <laughs> so I was told the other day. I'm like, huh, I could be a star on that one. And we're starting to get results on there question we go. number two. Question number two, 16. 16, that's about it, right? Yep. Okay. Launch the results on that. All right. So it looks like. Uh, 69%, 11 out of uh, 16 do use OKRs and five don't use OKRs. So that's good to know. So as we talk about, maybe you'll learn more about OKRs and when people do introduce the OKRs, because there's a lot of corporate people, they go to a seminar and go, we got to do OKRs because Google does it. Um, that'll come out into the, uh, to the forefront. So cool. All righty. With that, go to the next slide. Okay, so just briefly, since some of you have used OKRs, I'm going to give a little quick little thing here. We're looking at, it might be very familiar. Um, there's some basics. Go through the basics. Um, one of the things I like to quote here is like, OKRs fill the gap between bold vision and what the heck do I do today? And that was from one of the people in the videos. Um, from Mind Valley, he he has a uh, a nice video on OKRs. Also, um, bold vision that makes people feel. So the idea behind an OKR is it's not that oh let's let's install this software. It should be something that makes you actually want to work there. And that was a great point I thought when I heard some of the videos where you should be able to use OKRs as a marketing tool for your business. If you can't use your OKR as a marketing tool to attract new talent in your business, then it's not an OKR, okay? Just so you all know, there's a big difference between that. 
Um, and it's also not um, wool grown cell bones. And then my thing for me, Greg Messer, use for radical change. Move the needle. I want you to use when I coach teams and, and teach them about OKRs, these OKRs should help move the needle of the organization to the next level of the organization. That's what an OKR. If it doesn't answer these three type questions, then you're not doing it quite right. You're missing something. And hopefully we'll kind of talk through that. At, and if there's any questions as we go, please feel free to ask. Don't wait to the last minute. Um, plus, you're all agile people, so you shouldn't have a problem asking questions if you need to. Uh, brief history, 1954, we had managements by objective. There were smart objectives in 81. Balanced scorecard came out in 1992. And then Google in about 2000 is when Google started saying these OKRs and became a very popular thing. So there's some ancient history. They have a relationship with other things. They may sound similar to other stuff as you go through the process. And when they say, oh, I did this before, it's all slightly different. But they're pretty much from the same tree. Okay. OKRs should be like an objective. It should answer the question, where do I need to go? Where do we need to go? Inspire, like I said before, inspire, set direction. And it doesn't contain any measures. It shouldn't really say like sell 5,000 widgets, right? It shouldn't say that. And you should only have a few. You should, <laughs> bless you. It shouldn't be a lot. Um, key results should ask the question, how do I know I'm getting there? This is where you put the measurement. And one of the things we'll I'll talk about later some do's and don'ts and mistakes on OKRs. It should be but something that's achievable. Like if you say, I want to be in every business in, in the entire United States. Well, that's not achievable, right? Uh, maybe some fraction. I want to be in 80% of the households or 20% of the households. Something that's able to get there. But if you heard from Netflix and all, they wanted the, they kept blowing up their numbers and look where they are today using OKRs. And then the last part is the initiative. What will I do to get there? Um, what actual work are you going to do? What is the team going to do? And I gave a couple examples of some OKRs, just at a high level. Like, here's one for me. Be heard all around the world. That would be my objective. Something, I want to do this, right? My key result was be heard in five countries in each continent. Okay. My initiative is to reach out to meetup groups in multiple countries. So that's what I'm going to do to help influence being in these five countries, you know, five countries in, in each continent. Um, that would be an idea. Here's another one, something closer. Be the fastest ever at our company to turn around software builds. Maybe that's that would be a good objective. There's no numbers. It's something passionate. We want to kick everyone's butt and we want to be the best. Key result, cut regression testing from what from a week to a day. So that would be a goal. Is that possible? Yeah, it's possible. How can you do it? Then initiatives would be automate all new builds. So every new build has automated regression testing. And then at two would be identify the biggest issue areas and, and automate and push, push everything to the left. So those are some ideas, initiatives. As you can tell, I didn't say in my key result what we wanted to do. I just said how I want to measure it and know I'm getting there. Any questions on this? And there is a little thing like here, objective should only be like four. Um, each objective needs at least one key result and each key result needs an initiative. Because if you don't figure out what you're going to do, how are you going to move your key result numbers? Any questions? Any thoughts? Sound about right? Okay. Actually, uh, I just want to go over a little more uh, on the initiative uh, part of what you just mentioned. So mm -hmm. I want to make sure I get that right. Okay. But you should have like the big objective that makes the needle move, organizational deliverables. But in this particular uh, perspective, the initiative, they become like the vessel for the KRs, right? <laughs> Each KR needs an initiative, so I, I just want to make yes. sure uh, that they are like more of an upstream abstract concept than something downstream of the key results, actually. That's the part I need to realize. Yes, the, 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 key, the initiatives should influence the results in the key results. 
Okay. So it's a slightly, so like if you had on your car the speedometer gauge, right? And you said, I want to go 80 miles an hour in my car, or whatever it would be, 150. That would be an objective. Yeah. Highly measurable, quantificable. Yeah. Well, I want to be, I want, you might want to say, I want to have the fastest car there is. Okay, I see the nuance. Okay. okay. So I'm going to have the fastest car in the neighborhood. Wake up everyone in the morning. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, I want to wake everyone up. Key result is I want to be able to go 120 miles an hour or something like that on a race course. Right. And then how are you going to do that? Well, I'm going to put a bigger engine in my car. Right. Yes. Well, I'm gonna, then I'm gonna, it becomes your initiative and you can like, OK, I'm going to add yeah. uh, like more injectors. I'm yep. going to add uh, something that translate more power to the wheel. So it's yep. faster, more efficient. Cool. Or you could even say I'm going to take Tesla's battery powered engine, drop it in. Right. You can. The beauty of it is yeah, that team, whoever comes of it can, can just. Reuse. Yeah, and, and and they can come up. The teams come up with how they want to implement this, right? I could strap on a SpaceX rocket engine on top of my car and just light it. Yeah, you could do that. We might all die, but yeah, you could do that. So those are the kind of things that the objectives are high, and then the initiatives are what the teams are actually going to physically do, right? I appreciate uh, the clarification, sir. Thanks. You're welcome. So, so Greg, uh, mm -hmm. there is another question in the chat. Uh, okay. Is the objective always business aligned? Uh, no. No. And I think of it, I've been doing this lately um, in the IT world. I think of it, three areas your objectives can come from. One, they could come from a business. They could come from a technical st objective, like just because you want to be in a business world, I don't know necessarily that brings in IT capability people and, and, and encourages them. And then us, other part could be intangibles like diversity could be the most diverse organization, most loved organization. People want to work here for 20 years or we build we build people's capability. Right. So that would be a different objective. That's not necessarily business. Right. So, so it's it. Go ahead. So no, Greg, to add to your, um, it could be organization, social responsibility could be one of the objective, as you suggested, yep. that how how are we able to donate as a company and show the social responsibility, that can be your one of your objective also. Yes, and, and well, as we get into the cadence, I'm going to give you a little, and you can change them as you go through the year. You just don't have to declare one objective for the entire year. I mean, it's nice to have some mission for right. the company, but then your objectives would change every quarter. So you can mix it up. So you're not like always on that. So this year we're going to do business. Our right, next quarter we'll do some uh, like community group or something like that. We want to be the best known company in our local community. Maybe that'll be an OKR. Okay. Good. So we have two more questions. Do you want to take them now or do you want to hold on to them? Um, we could take them real quick and then we'll jump. So another question from Lilia is how can OKR relate to smart goals? If okay. you're covering later on, we can put okay. it. Um, do you want to answer or do you want No, to I'll, I'll cover that later. Okay. 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 So Thanks. Lilia will keep that. And That's fine. Jennifer is asking a question. Is there an assumed time frame for the objective? Yes, in a quarter. So we'll talk about that. You can have a mission for the year. There's also, you can also look at OKRs from a whole year perspective, but I'm gonna show you a cadence here in a little bit. So okay, let's, thank you. let's go to the next slide. Okay, go. All right, so some common anti-patterns for uh, OKRs. <sighs> A team A maps to an OKR, so we should do it too. And I just want to highlight that. Just because the other team maps the OKR doesn't mean your team has to map to the OKR. Some people are like, oh, they want that or this, that. It That's not how it works. You should do what you want to do. Um, so here's my favorite. I experienced this just recently. I go, uh, when was the last time you talked to OKRs? Oh, it was about a year and a half ago. I'm like, great. So the idea is that every year you sit there, you do your OKRs, and then you never touch them again. That's a common problem at, at corporations that I've seen, um, multiple corporations, by the way. Um, object, so let's look at some of these objectives. Everything 
in a, a backlog should map to an OKR. That's a big fallacy. Like some companies think they'll design and buy all the software so that every issue in their Jira or Rally or, or version one or whatever they're using, um, um, Azure, whatever it is, they all map to an OKR. That's not true. Um, let's make BAU items OKRs. That's not an OKR. Like companies say, we want to increase our sales by 10%. Well, that's not an OKR. Who cares? Who wants to go to work through a company because they say they want to increase their sales by 10%? Does that encourage you to work for the company? No. That's what you need to do as an operational organization to live and exist. So that's not an OKR. Um, key results should be about achieving 100%. We're going to do every person in our company. Well, that's not achievable. That That's unrealistic goal. Maybe 80%, maybe 60% of the company. Um, and then also about key results that they don't have to be measurable. No, that's the whole purpose behind key results. You have, it has to be a number to measure, um, initiatives. Again, there must be a one-to-one -one mapping. That's not necessarily true too either, because your initiatives, that stuff you're working may influence more than one OKR. So that's okay. Um, a general mistake also is this, keeping your OKR secret. I don't know how many organizations I come by and visit said, Oh, you did OKRs? Great. Where are they? I don't know. They don't know how to find them, right? And then again, we talked about it. We looked at once a year. They do it at the beginning of the year and they never come back. And I'm going to try to propose something that, that looks at it a little bit differently on that one. Um, hierarchies of OKRs. Here's a, a, just a description that you can get. Uh, you have your company objective. There Maybe there's a key result, how they want to measure it. It breaks down to a department objective. Maybe a subgroup, look at big companies, right? And then at the team level. And at the team level is where you start doing the initiatives. And every one of these levels, they may just pass that objective all the way down and they may break it down to a sub objective. And then the team measures an initiative with features, epics, whatever you want to call them, that they're working. It could be even stories. One company I'm proposing now, we're doing stories and uh, key results and measuring it all together. And we actually use our, their objective as an as a epic level in their system. All right, next slide. Here's tracking nightmare. This is where everything goes crazy. When you get companies that start going, hey, we got the, all these objectives and everything. You can see really fast, you can fill up your whole chart with objectives. Everyone who reports up to spend eight hours doing reporting. This is why you only want to do one or two objectives a quarter. You don't want to do more. Ideally, you're just going to do one objective per quarter. Because as you get bigger, you're going to have, I've been in places and I go, they had 50 objectives on their board. I'm like, you'll never get through all your objectives. It, and this is senior management. I said, you don't have time for 50 things to read. You got time for two, right? And I'm talking high level object, uh, executives. I'm like, this is crazy. So just keep an eye on the nightmare. This is why you only want to do one or two. And I wanted to show this picture because it's a mess, right? All right. So we got a quick survey here. Greg, yes, sorry. go ahead. Question on the previous slide. Yeah. Uh, if you don't mind. So these objectives under, as we go further down, are mm -hmm. they different objectives or they're the same objectives? They could be different or they could be the same. Okay. If the subgroup wants to break it down and build an objective that they relate to, because as you break down the group, they may have different product lines, different things. So okay. they need to make it closer to what they know and they're familiar okay. with then it makes sense that this can be a mess as we break it down further and further. Right. But if they're the same to me, I don't know why we need to make this kind of complex picture. Uh, and, and that's one of the keys when you, when you listen to some of these videos, I'll give you each yeah. level then thinks about it, breaks it down. Do they agree with it? They may want to break. I have had some objectives that were too big and like, right. well, we don't touch that. So let's change the objective okay. for what we do. Okay. Great. Thank you for okay. asking. Okay. Welcome. All right. So quick survey. Right. Yes, sir. You want number three? You number three. Know? Yep. Number three, please. Okay. So number Everyone three. Everyone should be seeing it now. All right. So how often do you change your OKRs at your company? You got a couple of NAs. So if no one uses OKRs, they probably don't. 
Got yearly, quarterly, monthly, never. <laughs> as weird as it may sound. No, it's only for the yearly one. You know, this is this is good to the good to, to have that. Fix objective in the fluid world are not adapted. <laughs> yeah. All right, go ahead and end the poll. All right. All right, so so we got uh, choice one about uh, which is NA about twenty two percent because some of them don't do OKRs yearly. Um, 33 percent. So 33 percent of the organizations don't change their their OKRs but yearly and then quarterly about 28 percent and then uh, 17 percent is never <laughs> never change your OKRs. So that's that's good good thing to, to think about. So now I'm going to go into this next slide and I'm going to talk about OKR cadence and if you some of the places they don't suggest some of the big consultant companies don't suggest changing OKRs. You make one, you go through the whole thing. But I believe you change it every quarter. And and when the beauty of this, if you're doing now I got Jerry. You got comedy relief here. This is Jerry Seinfeld. This is Jerry. He looks just like Jerry Seinfeld. Um, okay. <laughs> go sit. There you go, boy. Um so every year you might have a strategic OKR. You sit there and you figure out where do we want as a company we want to go. But then every quarter you you establish a new OKR. And then every month you check in. And if you're in Scrum, what I what I found is this beauty of this. If you do this right and you time it with your cadences for your company, your agile company, this check-in is as easy as thing on planet the earth to do. And it shouldn't take very long to do. And then again, like each quarter, you should establish a new OKR. And it shouldn't be the same OKR. If you just take the same OKR and keep applying every quarter, then you're not doing OKRs correctly. It should change. And that's something that a lot of places don't do. Because it gets boring. <laughs> to be honest with you. The whole idea is make work fun. All right? Here's, here's what, when I say this quarter, the beauty of Scrum and backlog and OKR backlog planning. So there may be some OKR initiative backlog that's in here. As teams are looking at their sprint planning, the team should be asking, hey, do we have anything for OKRs? Are we working anything in the sprint for OKRs? And if no, let's add one in the Scrum Master. So, okay, quick, 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 let's double check capacity, right? And make sure, because we got our business as usual work, things we're doing for the customer. And then we want to do our OKRs. Make sure you have enough space that you're you're not just throwing more stuff on there. I've had places like, well, we're just going to do OKRs and have battled this out. I'm like, no, you have to put capacity in your system to work the OKR so you treat them as a cool one as you do business stuff or, or, or process improvement or anything. But they should have space in there. So this is just something that with the Scrum and the beauty of it, it gives you a spot in the sprint planning to ask the question, are we working on anything for OKRs? And if you're not, the team should question, maybe we should, and maybe we need to take something off the backlog and put something in for OKRs. Okay. Any questions on that? Sound revolutionary? All right. So here might be a look of tracking a system. The, and I'll just show you the insights and, and, and Jay mentioned about insights. One of the customers I'm using now and the one previous we, we had, we had Jira um, have used Azure in the past and version one where I train my teams to use the same story mechanisms to track OKRs and the way I do it. And it's not on this picture, but we do an initiative or a capability, something at a higher level. We write it down to OKR for the quarter. We break it down into some epics, maybe some sub-objectives for the team, and then they come up with stories and key results, and we actually track them underneath that epic or that objective. We actually call it um, the epic actually an objective. We actually give it a little code. I came up with a little OKR or something, something, so that it's easy to find, and you can build dashboards and all that uh, related to that. But this is where it would be in a quarter. Like Here's an example of two OKR initiatives. 
Here's one initiative and the work we're going to do broken down in these two sprints. And then here's a second initiative and maybe has one epic, one story, maybe has something just like a, a, um, a skeleton, right? And then as you close sprints, you report out on your initiative. How much work do we get done? Do we get done what we're doing? And you have automatic updates. So you don't really need to do manual updates. If you build dashboards and reporting correctly, it all appears correctly. And then all you're given is your sub subjective feedback on how you did. Any questions on this, this thought process? And then you can always ask me questions as we get to the end, too. All right. Here's quick survey number four. OK, this is my I saw this the other day and I adapted my presentation based on something I saw from a big consulting company. How long does it take your organizations to process OKRs like get from idea to the masses, to the teams? How long does it take? So let's go ahead and start survey question number four. And let's see how that works. Jay, you want to share survey number four? Oh, you got it up. All right. Good job. Let's see how we doing. So how long does it take your organization to process or distribute your OKRs? Um, doesn't apply six months, one month, one week, a few days. Uh, we got 17 Okay, I guess you can end the poll. We're up at 17. Yep. yep. So it looks like, let's see, the biggest one we had is one month. We had six months. And I'll uh, just to tell a quick little story, I used to work for a big uh, defense contractor, number five in the world. We had P&L, profit and loss uh, responsibilities for what I was doing. And they didn't give me my profit and loss numbers until six months of the year. And I go, I lost six months of my year. How am I going to get – you cut me off, right? I didn't know what it was. And this is one of the problems I see with a lot of these OKRs. People spend way – organizations spend way too much time on figuring these out. So here's one of the things I saw from a big consultant company. And what they said is they said, okay – we got our quarterly OKRs, right? So we're going to, the week before the quarter starts, the corporation is going to figure out the OKRs. They're going to meet at a high level for a week. They're going to talk it through, figure it out. And then when they start the quarter, the first month, week one, week two, week three, they're going to waterfall those OKRs through the organization. So in essence, you're taking a month out of three month process just to distribute what the OKRs are. You shortchange the teams who are actually going to work on these OKRs by a third of their possible time, right? That is not agile. That ain't, you're not going to be successful. You're always going to wonder why you're never meeting your OKRs because you just took a third of their time away from processing these OKRs, right? That's a, it's crazy. Go ahead, Kieran. Are you right? You're not recommending that, Kieran, are you? No, 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 I'm not. I'm okay. not. I, I saw a question in the chat, so I okay. wanted to check with you whether you want to answer Yeah, go ahead. So the question is, why should it regularly change exactly? If some of your objectives take a while to show up in measurements, wouldn't some of them be consistent over the course of a fiscal year? So the question is from Peter. Uh, there's a there. There's two ways of looking at it. You want to implement something as rapid as possible to get results so you know you're you're gaining that. If your competition, um, I worked in the banking, it can. There's ways to, if you need credit for it, but you want to change it up every quarter. You don't want to, if it's the same thing and you can't see any results in a, in a, in a whole year, then it's probably not a good OKR. Because without getting that feedback loop that you, what you did is doing well, if you do something and you don't know six, eight months, a year from now, whether you did well, how are you going to be agile? How are you going to adapt and realize that really didn't help that goal? And we need to change that up. So you, you, it would be a debate and, and what makes sense. Because you're, go ahead. 
So sorry. So I think to add the, the answer that you gave to Peter looks like this relates to uh, Lisa's comment earlier. And Lisa, feel free to speak up. Uh, she mentioned that their OKR are actually are uh, their goals. So if you make your goals as OKR, and then they won't change over the year. So I think that was Lisa's comment says, yes, their OKRs were actually their goal. So Lisa, feel free to unmute and, and chime in. Oh, that was exactly it, Karen. Okay. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. Thank you. Great, great. Yeah, I mean, and again, think in an Azure world, think in smaller, smaller units, smaller time boxes. If your goal is the same for the year, there's no inspiration through the year to get there. But if you break it down into quarters to smaller goals, then you may be more inspired to achieve certain things. I mean, if we're talking about moving the whole company, yeah, a year long goal. But for individuals and teams, it, you want to break it down to smaller things. Got it. Thank you. All right. So let's go. Peter, any other clarification further or does that answer your question? And there is, the, there is discussion on it, too. Um, so what I want to propose. So if you're safe, now we know who, who trains safe people. We got Jay and Kira and, and Daily Agile. They do safe programming, right? So if you know anything about PI planning, I should ask a question to you, safe. So PI planning event is like a two-day event. So if we can plan an entire quarter on what we're going to get done down to the story level and all that for a thousands of people i've done this for thousands of people with with pi planning and multiple organizations why can't we do okr planning in two days right so the idea is that you look at and here's a little calendar i'm just going to share with you just a real quick oh one key thing in here i don't know how many corporate people do it to me but i always put celebrate some fun stuff at the end of the quarter so we celebrate a little fun, have a little fun. That's the very first thing these corporate executives want to take out. I'm like, come on. They didn't work their tail off. Give me, give them an hour to have some fun. Oh, we don't need to do that. It's for the teams. You know, if you want to be all bah humbug, you, you, you can be all that way. But have some fun. Then you start demoing. Like the team talks about how they did in the quarter for the OKRs. You spend an hour maybe just getting feedback. They're presenting that to the mid-level people. In the mid people, it just rolls it up. So within the first morning, you're doing demos. How do we do? Do we meet our OKRs? Things like that. Then in the afternoon, you take that feedback loop. We did good, bad. We need to change something. Then at the corporate level and the mid level, you're you're assembling new OKRs. Now remember, we're only you know, doing two. So, but I gave you there's two hours of whiteboarding, some ideas, some concepts. Do we want to use that? You should use a whiteboard. Probably can do a whole session on how to do OKRs in two days and do a class on it. Um, and just work that out. And then the, so that would be the afternoon. So the, by, by the time you're done, all the management, all the corporate level, they have the OKR set up for dist distribution to the teams. Day two in the morning, they get like two hours to again take that come up with some sub initiatives you could even maybe even make it an hour uh three hours if you need to depends how much you want to plan but they come up with the krs and any key results they want to do and how they want to measure that and then you do feedback loops once they're done they present that back up to the next level management management says yeah that looks good because you don't want to do it in, in quiet and then mid-level goes to the corporate level and so on so there's this bunch of feedback loops so by the time day two, getting into the afternoon, everyone's seen what everyone's OKRs. This is that visibility that we love transparency, right? In Scrum, it's one of the pillars, transparency, right? So we have this transparency and everyone sees it. Then at the end, when they all agree this is okay, enter into your system. So by the time the day's over, put it in a backlog, set it up, and, and then it's all done. So in two days, now, I'm going to put a caveat here. Nobody's going to get this done on the first time they try this. It may take an extra day. It shouldn't take an extra day, but it could take an extra day to make this happen. But once you get going, just like in PI planning, every time you do this, it gets tighter and tighter. Because ideally, you're only changing one or two things. And as teams are thinking about OKRs, as management is, they already have it in their brain. 
So when you come into these sessions, these sessions will get a little tighter. Okay. But there's no reason why OKRs. So compare this to what was a month. So when the consultants are coming out saying, let's do it a month, I'm saying, let's do it in two days. We proved this in, in SAFE and PI planning. It can be done in two days. There's no reason why it can't be done in two days. Um, and it shouldn't take, it should come from the heart. So that's what I have. Any questions on this schedule? Does it look awfully tight? Go ahead, Karen. Yeah, no. So I see a quick question from you. Okay. And I think this is, I answered her, but I wanted to make sure that you are okay with the answer. Okay. Her question is, how does this two-day OKR event schedule look like when the team members are over multiple time zones? So my answer is very similar to safe PI planning. We do PI planning for a lot of clients. And when we have people from multiple time zones, we break it down over like three hours or four hours, half a day workshop over three to four days. Yeah. And you can do that. And if the corporate, well, if the whole organization, corporate included, they're all over. Yes, definitely. If corporate is in one time zone, that corporate stuff can be done outside that time zone. But you really want the team feedback loop. Um, that's something that I've learned lately that some corporations think the teams don't have to give a feedback loop. Make. Yes, they do. Uh, any other thing? Lilia, does that answer your question? Yeah, that, thank you. I was just kind of wondering how that would play out. Yeah. So we have a few clients and Greg has done it, as he said, with 1,000 people. I'm sure we don't get all 1,000 people in the same time zone. So we have to adjust either morning, half a day, or evening, and then we break it down over multiple days. Definitely. And at the team level, this team thing might be in the morning. So they might spend two hours at... 6 a.m. in the morning to 8, just kind of going through the OKR. The good thing is if your corporate is in one time zone and you have people spread, they get their stuff done. They can hand that down so they when they start off in the morning, whatever that would be, they can. They can. Um, with that, yeah, we're down to the end. There's some video references. You know, I have a PDF. I sent that to Jay. Jay can distribute the PDF to anybody. Um, I like this OKR crash course that's really good it's only 11 minutes the reverse reality that's a really fun thing to watch 16 secrets this is a longer you know 11 minute thing and then scaling your business he talks for an hour and a half on okrs and how he's using it to transform his business um these are all nice little videos for reference points and then the next one I got some book recommendations. These are the classic ones that everyone's talking about if you want to read some extra stuff on OKRs. But there's no reason why anybody, I mean, it'll help you give you some ideas and generate. And, and it'll, like I said, it'll take a couple quarters to get there. And then, uh, any questions? So we have like another eight minutes for questions or if anybody has any question about OKR, some things they hit that, that they didn't like or want to talk about. Feel free to share. Yeah, you can unmute and ask questions directly, or you can put the question in the chat, and I can facilitate to, to coordinate with you, correct? Right? However you prefer. And later on, if you want to, you can connect with me on LinkedIn. I accept if you send me an uh, invite to connect, I'll connect, and I can always give you a finer points on, on stuff related to OKRs, too, and things I've done at a couple of large companies now. I have a question. Um, sure. It's sort of related to Peter's earlier question that you did answer. So if you have a an objective, it sh should you not choose an objective that is going to last more than one quarter, I guess? Because if you want to change them quarterly, there could be some objectives that would take more than a quarter to implement. So like not implement, but to reach. So would you suggest making smaller objectives that wouldn't take longer than a quarter? Yes. I, 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 you can do both longer ones and shorter ones. If you do a longer one, I would also encourage you to have a shorter one too. Okay. That would be smaller. Um, because I know maybe you need to move the whole corporation and you have this, and those are more mission goal things like for the whole year, we want to be the best in the, in the world or, you know, we would increase like Netflix, I think, when it went from like 8 million users to, you know, 100 million users, whatever they did in their video. If you watch it, there's some Netflix videos out there mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah, that's not going to happen overnight. But 
that what it challenges you on when you do make it smaller it challenges you to think radically to make that achievement because you don't make OKRs by incrementally improving Kaizen is a great thing Kaizen is small little changes over time right and as you build up like I was like if you do 1% change every sprint theory you can have a 26% change throughout your corp in, in a year without really doing a lot but in the OKR world it's like it's like a radical change so what can we do totally different that we're not doing now to get there okay thank you you're welcome all right all right Here's all my contact information. You can watch, uh, follow me on 5 a.m. Mr. Scrum. I'm, I'm in all the social medias. If you have any questions, as you say, I'm at Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, podcasts, LinkedIn. Um, I got my own website. Feel free to connect with me, ask me questions. If you want to say, how do I do this in Jira? What did you do? I can maybe um, give more clarification on that and little techniques I've done. Oh, so, so Greg, if so audience, if we have no more questions, thank you very much for joining. And uh, if you do have any questions, feel free to reach out to Greg or us and uh, we can definitely answer you. How do you, and as Greg mentioned many times, you understand this and it's like, oh, how do I do this in Jira? Um, definitely Greg can help you, we can help you. Yeah.